What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations, 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. Also, I host the only online conversation in the world for dads and fathers that is sponsored by Dove Men Care. It's also co-sponsored by Dad Central, Canada's national fatherhood organization. And as always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. We're broadcasting, I think it's July 9th. Is it? Eight? Yeah, July 9th. We haven't been around for a bit on the on the Saturday Night Live, the other Saturday Night Live. We're the other Saturday Night Live. We were, uh, didn't broadcast on State of Things with Asian Joe. It was Canada Day on uh, July 1st in uh, Canada, and July 4th was uh, 4th of July, Independence Day in the U.S. And uh, for those who had their head in the sand, yesterday, most, at least mo at least half the Canadian population that had access to internet had no access to internet. We had a day without any internet service yesterday, and it was quite, quite interesting. But you know what? I prayed that we would have tonight states of things happening. And it's happening. So for those who don't know, you're going to know in a few minutes because we two have two fantastic ladies and two fantastic mothers. And I gave them flowers before we went live saying they're fantastic mothers. So respect the wonderful mothers of Aisha K. Thaggers and Jill D. Jones. What's going on? Hey. <laughs> Jill, you got yourself on mute. Such a nice greeting. Yeah, well, well, you both of you are worthy and deserving of it. What's been going on? Oh, just another week in America, you know. Oh, oh my it's, goodness! It's like you know, take another, you know. What next? I mean, from one minute to by minute by minute, it just changes. I just heard that that crazy kook is in Alaska giving a rally. I was like, what, Trump? It's like it just doesn't stop. It's like, oh my well, God. It just well, well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because I was watching a little bit of TV today, and there's some documentary series coming out on Discovery Plus about his family. Oh, really? that's the one that that has been of interest to the January 6th committee. Yes. That's the that's the uh, the director I just got rid of my subscription. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But the director has since, I think he's changed some since the January 6th he, he committee did. went into it. Because a lot of the people that he's now interviewed for it are left-leaning people. I mean, he has the footage of the Trumps. But then he has some people that you're very familiar with from MSNBC and CNN in, in politics talking about how insane all of this really is. Wow. I've seen clips and I was just like, oh, that it, it is the same. The extended clip, the trailer for it has those people in it. And so it's, yeah. you could tell it's going to be something different than what it would have been had this not been such of interest to the January 6th committee. Hmm. But I mean, do the checks and balances, he couldn't, you know, it's like, Fox lies so much, you could never use it as a credible source for anything. Right. I mean, ever. Like, only a stupid or any person of its people. would ever hold that. Yeah. Because if you even notice how they speak about things, it's spoken even in the concept of where you couldn't even pin it down and hold them to what they're saying because it's all scripted, really pseudo. They're lying all the time. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and the uh, people. It's the one that shows that Laura Ingraham's brother did the interview that said that they grew up with a Nazi sympathizing dad and that she sympathized with her father, probably because she was having sex with her father. They think there was some molestation, Ouch. but it would make Ouch. sense why she leans more into the Nazi. You know, she's the one who gave the Sig Heil on the, in a really passive aggressive way after uh, Trump won. And you'll see her standing there. So, yeah, she and her dad had some another daddy issues. That's why she related to Trump and Ivanka's relationship so well. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. Got it. Well, yeah, but this pretty one, obvious was, there was trauma and yeah. molestation there. This film's going to be interesting, though, because when you watch the clip, you see some people like you see. I can't remember if it was 
it wasn't so much Jeannie Haskins. I can't remember who it was that that sat there and said, it's worse than you thought. <laughs> you know, wow. that that's the part that really gets you is that when okay. you hear people say it's worse than you thought and what we thought was already really bad. Wow. So I can only imagine the things that that committee has seen that mm-hmm. we haven't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, folks. And that we're not going we to think. see, right? Right. Well, it's worse wow. than what we think. Okay. Well, let's get into it. Want to say hello to some friends as always. Good evening, Jen. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. And people, if I sound a little different, yes, I have a head cold. So I'm mm-hmm. pushing through. So periodically, you, if you're watching me, see myself put put my, see me put myself on mute just to conserve. But as I said, I didn't want to miss this this evening. So let's make it happen. So first conversation piece, and there's so many because we haven't been live for two weeks now. Let's start off with this video of Jalen Walker shooting Lee's questions, outrage in Akron. Who wants to start on this one? Well, I have a question for you. You were in Akron. Well, you were in Ohio. Yes. What what was the climate there? I was in Cleveland and I didn't hear too much, but like, I'm just going like, and and I got to be honest, I was a little concerned about going to the U.S. And then when I see something like that happening, it's not close, but in the same state that I'm in on the 4th of July, I'm going, it really, it really hit what's going on. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really touching a lot of different areas. Like right here, it's Ben Crump was actually in New Haven last week because there's a case out of here from local police officers and someone that was arrested being shaken in the truck, kind of like a, Freddie Gray kind of thing. And so you can see like the the Jalen Walker came up and you could see people protesting locally here. I wonder how, you know, I, I've seen videos, but I wonder how it's playing throughout the country. Well, they arrested Breonna Taylor's aunt yeah, in Ohio. Her, which is and her and Blake, Jacob Blake or his relative as well. Yeah, so his father. The the thing is, and they and they lied and said that they were rioting and all this other stuff. And we saw the video, and I'm just sick of it. Ohio is a story. It's another one, and it should really go in the bucket for a long time because it is actively acting out things. They just told everybody they can walk around with guns there, and now they're making yes. up things that people are trying to, you know, it's no wonder that young black kids now don't really want to Bonnie and Clyde it out of this because the reality is they what die. are you doing to our kids? Yeah. You guys are torturing our children. You're torturing them and you're worried and going to make up things about them in a car chase. I live in a state where there's a car chase every hour and it's televised. What a bunch of wimps. We've discovered Texas as badass as they think and try to pretend that they are. They're too afraid to go and confront a guy with an assault weapon with a bunch of little kids, even at that. And then we find out a bunch about the bunch of wimps in Akron who, I mean, it's like ridiculous. Take them off the payroll. We'd rather be on our own. I got all these horrible threats because I posted about Jalen Walker on my Facebook account. I had a bunch of hillbillies from Akron confronting me and saying that they hope that I experience blah, 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 and whatever. And I'm like, really? I I really don't care. You are nothing to me. You are a zero. I don't think much of you to begin with. So why would you think that anything you say to me is going to make me warm up to you? I don't care. You see that as someone from Ohio. You see that as someone from Ohio. (laughs) Yeah, as as someone from Ohio. It's like, I'm done. Done. This was everything that I hated about Ohio. Talk about a group of white people that are so out of touch and how they all pat themselves on the back that they're so together and they know it all. They don't know. You know, I was looking at a movie today, an old movie, and I talked to a friend of mine. I said, isn't it interesting how white people always played themselves like they were on the good side of everything? 
in a in, in the war, like it was a, a war movie. It was after like World War II. Really? You're now going to try to convince me that those rednecks that you guys drafted to go into World War II actually killed anybody who was German without crying over it? And then they come back for what? I don't buy any of it. That's crap. That's not even true. Well, I don't believe it anymore. I don't believe anything they tell us because, you know, the Confederacy and that belief system, it's too easily, you know, started back up and got the band back together. So in my mind, I'm not saying there weren't vets from that day and age, but they're racist. And how so twisted minds going in and asking them to kill, like, you know, Mussolini and all of these things. I think it was actually too much for them to even understand what they were doing. But then you watch a movie about all these concepts of freedom and peace, love and happiness. And white people always portray themselves as if they were so on the right side of history. And now we really look at it and go, no, actually 75 million of you in America aren't. 75 million of you in 2022 voted for Donald Trump. Seriously. What that's crazy. That's that you know there's an article that I just read that said by 2040 only 8 states, 8 states in America will have 50% of America's population. And that is going and the other minorities will be dispersed in the electoral area. You cannot say that that doesn't need to be changed then. These are, these are people who are projecting this. They see it happening. They see the migratory th patterns happening. So 50%, over 50, are going to live in Texas, California, New York, North Carolina was one of them. I think uh, there were, you know, of course, four more. But the reality is we, they got to fix this. The country's in dire straits, but it ain't out of the woods yet. I think the, the sick place. I think the sad part about this shooting comes in the after. I mean, the shooting itself obviously was sad. The video itself obviously was sad. But the aftermath, what happens a few days later, in that Jay, they said they fired one over a hundred shots, sixty plus hit him. But then you have this young man who fires. 70 plus shots in a crowd of people and he is taken away peacefully in you know he he doesn't end up shot or anything wait a second he just killed seven people injured more than 30 and he and, and you take him peacefully the one who looked like a deformed winona rider <sighs> Who shot up people on? Yeah, July we'll get 4th. we'll get to that in a minute. Let's stick. Let's stick but, on but the. That, uh, but that, but that is the that's the sad part. It's like there is nothing that Jalen Walker did that warranted the amount no. of shots fired at him. They they were still they were so bold, but it's like they they see this other kid. Oh, this could be my son, so I'm not going to shoot. And it is it is a problem. Where but we. We've been talking about these sort of situations ever since the first time we've come on here. Why hasn't there been any progress in policing? Or, well, well let me say, let me put it this way. Yes, there probably has been some pro progress, but where is the missing gap when it comes to policing? You can't out-police racism. Okay. That, that, that is it. It doesn't matter what the training is. It doesn't matter what what any of it is you can't out police people's i mean you can't people cannot get past their racism their stereotypes their widely held beliefs no matter how twisted they are they can't get past it so you can have the best training whatever but if your personal feelings and beliefs are still entering the building it doesn't matter how we, it doesn't matter all the changes we try to make to policing. You can't get over people's, people's ideals. And remember that policing becomes that profession that attracts a lot of young white males who feel otherwise 
emasculated in other areas of their lives. They feel that they have this sense of prior, this sense of authority when they get that job. If and these are the ones typically who are too afraid to go into the military at that. So you're you're dealing with a whole bunch of issues, and that people are bringing from outside the job into the job, and it's catastrophic. Jill, anything you want to add? No, because I totally agree with what she said. I think we do know that the Ku Klux Klan have been tearing through a new rebranding for the last, yeah, since Annie, the 60s. Can I just interrupt? Did you see the tweet by, what's his name? David Allen Greer. Yes. I of the protesters in Boston. Yes, it was fantastic. And he said the new, the new Klan. They've been rebranding and they've been putting people in positions to work and hired and all of that, because you have to remember when we were busting them up and going undercover, we were putting more African-American males and women, females in, in law enforcement. So what they did is over a period of time sort of demonize African and black people again and start, you know, becoming more cliquish in these departments in the blue line, the thin blue line. And there was some kind of weird indoctrination behind that. And, and then the hiring started and the academies and all of that just started slipping off because also they've made sure that for at least a good 20 years, once they gave young black men and women a felon, a label on their lives, they could they could write them off and they were like done. They could never get anything. So that's how they got rid and kept black people out of government positions and a lot of things. But it's a new day dawning and everybody needs to pay attention to what's going on in Sri Lanka. Because let me tell you something, I've been saying it for a long time. That will be here and it will make, if white people keep pushing us, it will make that insurrection look like a goddamn tea party because you cannot do what you continue to keep doing to people. But remember what the tea party in this country looks like. But I'm saying that looks like, you know, that will look like nothing because after the last shooting for July 4th and all of that, people are, people are up to here. And it's, it's only if you read enough Malcolm Gladwell, who is one of my favorites, there is a tipping point and the, and the cream is rising up. Yeah. I think the tipping point though, too, really was the fact that, and we're going to get to it, but it was the fact that this happened on a so-called day that the Patriots come out and, and that, that ended up being the tipping point. But as far as the Jalen Walker shooting, I don't, I mean, how we'll see this play out is, is, going to be interesting are they going to charge people are they going to are will these people be convicted i mean we're just now seeing some of the things come out of the federal case for the george floyd shooting where chauvin got what 22 years 22 and a half years on the federal side so when his sentence is up in the state side he will end up going toward to federal prison for the next 22 and a half years with no per, no parole and it will be you know he's spending the rest of his life there but he's look done what, but look what had to happen in order for us to get to that point he had i mean the protest that had to happen because otherwise had there not been those protests that lasted almost two years, there would not have been any kind of conviction, I don't think. I think that there would have been something minor. I mean, it's it's to the point right now where the one of the officers involved just pled pl guilty on the state trial. So I think that there's going to be the outcome of this will be the interesting part. And will we also have, will we also have this kind of sustained level of Oh, I think she's frozen. 
I think she is frozen. No problem. We I will. Know. That's all right. We. Oh, so just a little filler. Hopefully we'll get mm -hmm. Aisha back in a second. So while I was in the USA, someone uh, someone started talking about your favorite attorney general. Oh. <laughs> and it, it was almost mirror of what you were saying. He, yes. he he went in on him like what I said. I said, do you know Jill Jones? He goes, really? <laughs> who that? Who that? Who that? <laughs> but uh, no I problem. think that we're we're getting to the point why I keep talking about a tipping point because I think it's important to understand that we have to really address the complicity of the church and racism in America. And then once you open up that spider web and where all those tentacles are, you will discover they're in law enforcement, they're in your schools, they're everywhere. And that is the indoctrination in this country. So you're dealing with years and years of what they've done to people and their belief systems and the fear that they've provoked over black men and women and what people are afraid of. And, and not only that, the propaganda, the means of producing television shows with certain concepts and scripts. This has been a long time coming. I mean, you, you have to sometimes sit back and look at the shows that boomers grew up with or the silent generation. What were they watching? Those things don't leave you, but it's really, they were all productions don't just come about because people, people who have money invest in productions and actors and musicians and all of that propaganda if it's not a free society and i think what we've really found out is it's not a free society it never has been no, it hasn't. they they really do allow people to squeak through and they pick and choose who they want it's like i watched a funny thing like prince was giving an interview and he said there was a time with our music like with the marvin gaze yeah. or people would say things like what happened to the bob dylans and what happened to all of that that was a time when people actually were communicating with each other through their music and telling each other what was happening and how they wanted to be and project themselves. But corporate America got involved and killed it. They killed that. They don't want us talking. They don't want edifying music. They don't want any of that. The they matrix, do not want it. The matrix. Come on now. Yeah, it it's is. The matrix. It's the matrix. Well, Hopefully totally. we'll get Aisha back, but we'll move on to the next conversation topic, which happened on July 4th, the High Park mass shooting on July 4th. And the funny thing I find about this is that... Oh, she said they have a blackout. Oh, okay. So we may not have Aisha for a while, so it's going to be myself and Jill D doing our, doing our thing. <laughs> it's all right. We, we, we've been... We've had to do it before. So as that old song by the Staple Singers, let's do it again. Let's do I know, it again. right? <laughs> great song. Great song. But yeah, the thing I, I notice about this, I don't hear so much about gun stuff. Like people saying outlawing guns. Like this, it's a weird story because he had a history of threats in the past. They go into always using the mental illness thing. I mean, he looked weird. It's not, you know, this is the problem in America. And, 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 and it's like, it all always touches the symptom of something. I was watching an African elder speak about medicine. And he was saying that America is the butcher. It's the great butcher. Because basically, mm. it's not trying to cure anything. It, it just doesn't. There were treatments that came from tribes and different things that were set and designed to cure people and cure habits. And normally all of it required changing your diet, first of all, but not in America. People can still do what they want, live the way they want, and they will still have these, these crazy issues with their health. It basically, so what they're saying about the mass, the masses and, and America, it's not designed to cure anything. It's a, it's, everything's got to be a problem because everything is a revenue center, everything. So when you have a setup that way of capitalism, everything is considered potential revenue. So that's the problem where we are. And the country has sacrificed that and people are now okay with it. They seem to be because 
let's be honest, the mental health of our nation, look at the food people eat. Maybe you, you, you you, like vitamin B alone. Jill, interesting. One of my closest friends during the lack of cell phone service yesterday, him and his wife watched documentaries about homelessness in different cities around the world. And he actually watched the documentary of the homelessness in California. I know. And, and, and he was telling me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but he was saying there's 150,000 homeless people in California. Well, yeah, but we can thank a lot of conservative governors keep sending their people on buses here. Wow. They buy them tickets and send them here. Wow. What is it? So Abbott, we know that Governor Abbott sent a bunch to Delaware, I believe, recently. So yeah, that's an old the oldest trick in the book. We Governor Newsom built a lot of houses for veterans and tiny houses. The really interesting thing is we have a lot of people who can't even stay in their houses anymore. They've been on the street so long. They don't know what that's like. But my belief system is America always wants to scratch the surface of something, but the real reality is like a good diet can change and prevent mental health problems. Just that alone. We don't feed our children. We had actually, remember, don't forget, we had Republicans arguing not to feed children in school. So they're okay with that and the mental health that that creates from food deficiencies. This is the, these are the an monsters that actually get to go home and get a $175,000 a year salary or, and then plus all the stuff they pocket on the side for every law that they pass because all the senators and all the Congress people tend to do that. You well, know. let's go. Well, Aisha's back. Amen. Yeah, I had to join in my phone because my laptop when the lights and everything came back on, decided it's gonna go into update mode. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're just catching up on the Highland Park mass shooting. And, and I was just saying that I'm not hearing too much about restrictive gun laws and things about this. So it just seems like, yeah, okay. Well, you got to remember, they're not going to do, they're not going to do it, one, because it's just not politi politically expedient for Republicans to do it. But two, remember, the other gun law was just signed by Joe Biden, what, the day before or two days before? And it shows and so, that it doesn't work. And so it, it, it's one of those things where, well, the thing is, is that they haven't even had a chance to have it work before everything that's in that bill became obsolete. Once this, once this shooting came out and, and then you hear the details of it, that his father brought him the gun when it was determined that he wasn't well enough to get it on his own. There were, there were the sons and, and here's the, the bottom line. It, we can't say it's mental health. We can't say it's this, it's that. Even if we put the gun laws, if we have people skirting the law, it doesn't matter what laws you put in place when people are going to skirt them. So even, even if they put all these provisions that are in that particular bill in place, there are still people that are like this kid's father who are going to buy their wayward children guns anyway. Well, we also knew from looking at his mother, who was arguing with the cops after this happened, I knew immediately from that low sloped forehead and her mouth designed to eat vermin that we were dealing with a special case and there was no hope. Jill, why did you go there? It's the truth. I mean, I looking at, if I had to eat cereal every morning across from that family, I would have been like, what the holy. I thought the kid was an anime drawing. When I saw the picture, I thought it was like an anime drawing because it just didn't look real. No, it, it was like the, the chin, you know, it was really, there's a problem and it felt like part of his face was missing. Like the yeah. world, like like his face had stopped right here. I agree. I, I I was I was wondering if he was gonna be taken alive or not. 
Uh, oh, you know, he dressed, he dressed you, and looked like Winona Ryder coming down, you know, from like freaking Stranger Things. I don't know what we were supposed to do. I mean, he really pulled that old Joker thing, like it. the Joker, like that was in that movie where the one dressed as a nurse. Right. He was dressed up, though. They were like, he had on a wig and he had on a dress when he yeah. did the shooting. When he left, he walked right through the crowd because yeah. everybody thought that he was trying to get away like the yeah. rest of them because he took off the wig and he took off the dress and yeah. himself. And that's how he was able to run. I haven't, I haven't gone too deep in regards to the coverage of this, but what are the cities? Uh, what are the citizens of that city saying? Are they saying there should be stricter gun laws? I'm not hearing any of this. I don't some of the media is talking heard, about it. Well, some of the ones that I've heard have been saying, yeah, this is too much. What are we going to do about it? Now, because it's them. It's going to get I, swept under the rug, just I, like you, Valde. They're on to the next one. It's never going to change. I think the Uvalde one and the Buffalo one had a longer life in the news specifically because of how those happened. This one here, I, people have seen this before. This is akin to the Gabby Giffords shooting because she was at some kind of fair or whatever in a grocery market. They, they've had this before, but the people that they've interviewed so far have said not, not so much can't believe this is happening to us, but yeah, we kind of expected it. That was that was what I got from the people that were in. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how you expect to see a two-year-old that has, you know, been orphaned by both parents or a girl running with her mother who gets shot in the chest and we find it normal. I blame American people, citizens, each and every one of us are guilty. The fact that we don't do anything about it. it, it it's really the truth. I, I, I don't even know what to say anymore but i can tell you that i think europe and all the other civilized countries that are experiencing some kind of blowback from this disgusting lifestyle that we're le leading here are at some point going to have to call out america for its human rights violations i think it'll and they're going to have to sanction us because it's really the only way that we need to beg other rational countries who you know, they're at least they're not trying to arm their citizens or, or, or I mean, we'll talk about Japan later, but that's the influence of America. And with the Internet now, other countries should be aware. They should be aware that this sickness is not catching. It might be more catching than COVID. And they need yeah. to pay attention and start putting yeah. more restrictions on the platforms and privacy things if they don't want their countries to be like ours. But you know, for me, I think that getting to the point where people, particularly in the suburbs are saying, oh, you know, when what's next? I think they're finally seeing the way that people who have grown up or lived in inner cities feel all the time because we've been, we've been down that road already We've been past the, yeah, um, it's a surprise. You know, the shooting, it's a surprise. It hasn't been a surprise. It's just, I think, for many people, a surprise of it happening where it's happening. We always, we, we've been a society that's been comfortable with shootings being relegated to certain populations in certain areas of the country. And now there is no there is no prediction of where this gun violence will happen. You can't say well, a specific there, place in time of where it will happen now because it is so common. But there are solutions. Like a parade yeah. like that, you should have some kind of special stamp, some kind of special something that gets you into it. It should be surrounded. It should be but remember, areas, he was areas <laughs> should be sectioned off, like in the Hunger Games, the way people live in America. It should be like that now. We should have areas, pockets that are totally surrounded by military. And when you come in and out, like in Palestine, you should have to register and sign in. 
I don't believe anymore. I don't think you should walk into a supermarket with your phone talking to anybody. You should know what you're getting. Get in, get the hell out. This is the way I live. I feel like every city in your vicinity, in your state, should corner it off at its borders of its own city. And people should have to have permission to come in and out. And that's a, that way of living is the reason why you'll have people on the right, particularly complaining about their freedoms. That that's like, okay. Oh, we don't. Know, we're free yeah. place. We should, you know, we're free to. You know, we should. That's not. Living yeah. In the I'm it's sorry, living in the but it's but either it's, that or us. They, there's got to be. You can't have it both ways. At this you point, we're preservation. Everybody's a sitting duck. Every it's like Russian roulette. You might as well come home, spin a gun around, and just shoot yourself, I guess, at some point to determine if, oh, well, I made it today. It's Russian roulette when you live in America, period. And your kids too. You know, yep. that's the reality. Bang, bang. That's, it's over because that's what this country has become. And we should just treat it as such of what it is. It's a dystopian existence and it's, it's ravaging the morale and the hearts and the minds of everyone who lives here has anxiety. If anything, meds and the increase of meds has gone up. And then they don't even want to give you give you anything for that. You know, you can't even like get health insurance. At this point, it's no wonder there are people that take fentanyl and just want to die. I don't, I get the drug epidemic. I totally understand it. It makes every, when people have a reason to live, they don't do what they're doing. Happy people do not act like American people. And you know, the other the other thing about this, this shooting that was, I think, really sad was the revelation that a lot of those parents got that their kids knew what to do in the event of a mass shooter. And the parents yeah. were just surprised and stunned. Like, how do you know this? How do you not talk to your kids? Mm -hmm. how, how, how do you not ask your kids, hey, how are you feeling if I haven't, when my daughter was in school, I asked her about it. After, but housewives know, don't after, know. They aren't giving updates, like, at what the new thing is. You know, every time somebody's on TV, they're like, I hid in the closet. Stop saying where you hid. Every, the next shooter will know where to go look. Stop saying you put bodies on top of you to hide from them, because the shoot, next shooter is just going to shoot at everybody a couple times on the ground. Stop telling everybody, you know to get your moment on TV. This is a, you know, that's the other thing. Loose lips sink ships. But like I said, happy people don't behave the way most American people do. It's a real, like every European person I know is trying so hard to never have to come here again. Work-wise, everything. They don't care. They don't care about touring. They don't want it. Oh. That, that that's that's not a good sign for the future of the country no particularly if by 2040 you're looking at half of the country being controlled by those morons in and setting the tone for the major the minority setting the tone oh, for the majority. majority you know and that's why would you want to live here i mean i'm telling people now if you have children you need to consider this. These are people who are like, you know, planners of, of cities and structures and, and, and doing budgetary things. They see what's coming. Sociologists, they see what's happening. And, and investors, if they're not willing to invest in that, why would you? Start learning different languages. Get the hell out of here and make a life elsewhere because it's not going to be tenable. Oh. Unless right. you want the crew from Deliverance telling you how to live your life or the Christian Taliban. It's really not too far off. You know, it's like The Color of Compromise was a book about, you know, how Christianity was such a link to racism in America, particularly. And they've had a vision. What do you think these Bible thumpers have been doing all this time? They're, you think it just, you know, a jet was enough? No, there's more to that. You've given these people all this money. So at a certain point, it becomes just power alone is what they want. 
And that's dangerous. We saw what they did during the witch burnings of Salem. We saw what they did during the insur- in the uh, in Spain inquisitions. Those are the same mindsets of people who have a very weird God that they worship. Strange. Ego- their God is as egotistical as they are. The list of places that we just can't go and feel safe has gotten smaller. I mean, I mean, th- think yeah. of it. There are there are more places where you can't go where you are safe. Check the are- exits when you go in. Don't wear high heels. Keep a pair of spare shoes in your car. Yeah, there's all sorts of things. But the thing is, not even not even that. You can't even leave home and be. You can't even be at home and be safe without wor- you know eating ice cream on your couch without worry that a police officer or somebody's going to storm in your house and shoot you up. That too. So, like it, I said, it, learn new languages, get some education, well, find so, other options of places so, to so, live. So, before we move on to the next conversation topic, it, it makes me ask this question, ladies: Is America under siege? It's oh, done. We've been, we've it's, been done. Under, it's like I think it's, since it's, Barack Obama, it's it's a dead place. Yeah, people dead. are slowly waking up to us being under siege. I, yeah. I think that is that people are slowly coming to because it was remember it's always been it's okay as long as it doesn't happen here, and then once it starts happening in places that look like here, a lot then it has become a problem. When it was when it was not in places that were, you know, the, it can't happen here places. That's when the problem should have been taken care of. And it was. And when, and now what we have learned is they got, they were livid when Barack Obama became president. And I'm also starting to feel like the relationship that Barack Obama had to forge with Biden was such a political one in trying to appease them. I'm not even that so sure that he was really on the same page as President Obama as much as he was the white overseer that could be the glue to sort of bridge between the white extremists who really, really still existed. Because I'm less than happy with what Biden's choices are. It's, I mean, still, I mean, it's still it's still a little Jim America, Crow favoring to me and I don't know there's something weird about him yeah he brought, he brought the middle America vote for the Obama campaign they, that's what they knew was go, was his was his value to the campaign in 2008 and that is why he was selected compared to all the other people who were in the running like Hillary Clinton for right. vice president so so he had a purpose for that campaign and he's and i mean he served his purpose in terms of appealing to the those old america mayberry living people the andy griffiths of the world but he was but, not the one we needed for now this time i mean but that was pre you gotta remember too that was also pre tea party which eventually someone will start looking into the the but, fundamental Tea Party as to how we got where we are now because that's but I where used to, just with all due respect and I'm glad you brought that up because then as white as that man is and as many friends as he's had come and go in this pol- political game how the hell am I supposed to actually believe that he didn't know what the what was going on in the underbelly because I'm sure they invited him to their clubs and their meetings too just because and so on that strength alone I have a hard time biting off everything that he's trying to sell me. And yes, he's the best of what we've got, but I'm really pissed off with that North Carolina Jim Clyburn. He needed to stay the f- out of it. He and those old people and young people need to get out there and vote. And I'm not talking about voting for a start to, this is, this was just off the chain, how they set that up again. It's too much for me. And that whole, who's running the DNC, he ain't the one either. We need somebody with their ear to the ground. Jamie, whatever his name is, he's not the one giving money to the wrong candidates. It's not cool. And it's really disgusting. They put in people that they can control. Joe Biden knew that this uh, racist was going on. All right. So and, let's go ahead. Go ahead, and share. go ahead. 
the challenge though ends up being what do we do next yeah there are a lot of there are other organizations like run for something emily's list that also you know run democratic candidates they need the support of people people need to start looking at they're also they also run democrats but they run specific democrats like emily's list is pro-choice democratic women that is their niche and run for something are focusing on candidates under 40. so i think that as people delve more into this issue starting to look elsewhere for solutions political solutions is going to be the start of how we get this gun thing under control all right let's move forward here we're gonna just catch up on some comments Jen says, Jill, you are 100% correct about the church. The Catholic church is at the heart of much evil. That's a, that's her opinion. Regina Frizz, happy early birthday, Jill. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Tachi, haven't heard from you in a minute. Welcome, no. welcome to Dr. Tachi, host of Mediascope on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern time on Instagram Live and then on a number of different platforms, 6 p.m. Eastern Time Wednesdays for YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. And I think they're even on in the Caribbean islands too. So this is good. Cinema Canala says, I overhear a conversation between two moms. One was going to leave the USA to Africa for a mission trip two years. The other was telling how she could do that. Africa is dangerous, a dangerous area. People get killed for no reason. And so I had the interview and asked both of them, Look, let's look at the latest school shooting. So it's interesting how Americans, I just, it's interesting Americans look at other places in the world saying it's so violent, but wow. And then- So out of kind touch. So Cinema kind of goes, yeah, they both got silent when she, she intervened and said, look what's going on in America. And they both got silent. So lots of things going down, lots of things going down. Next Well, convers- you know, people are always afraid of the African man or woman. And, you know, they, they have no concept. This week I posted something from like a page on Instagram called African Germany. And they posted like sort of like African uncles at a party and they were all dancing. And somebody had noted that they I were like, that. That I so love cool. it. Yeah, it was, so, was cool. so cool. And I looked at that and I said, that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of seeing our people in power, in their regality, all of it. They don't like it and they always, you know, have a problem with it. And that, you know, those days need to come to a close. Okay. And look who's back. I came back home from a wonderful trip back to yes. the American VS. Sick of all Portugal. This. Yes, Laura, love your pictures. And it looked like you had a fantastic time. Hopefully you'll totally. be back with us sooner rather than later. But I'm glad you had a great trip. Really enjoyed the pictures. Sound like you had a great it looks like you had a great time. It looks like she did. They did. Yeah. yeah. So fantastic. Next conversation piece. Georgia election probe. My gosh. Georgia seems to be a battleground every other day. Yeah. What what's going on in Georgia now? I mean, I look, I gotta say, I admire that district attorney. She was like, she's like she just did what the law required her to do she was doing she's doing her job wish merrick garland would get on the ball like she is because she's just like you know what you commit a crime in my jurisdiction you get invested for a crime and then but my favorite part was when she was saying how yeah she gets a lot of hate a lot of racism and her response to it is like you're telling me you're calling me a a black whatever she's like i know i'm black where you would what's the point (laughs) no that's her comeback she's like you're telling me something i already know and i'm proud of who i am and this is going on like she said you commit a crime in my jurisdiction you know i'm investigating the crime and so she's and leaving all doors open like they said to her will you consider subpoenaing Trump? And she said, anything is possible. And I just like the fact that 
the interviewer from MSNBC that talked with her the other day was like, well, you know, Lindsey Graham said he's going to fight this. And she's like, okay. <laughs> this, she's in Congress and all those other cases, like the, Mil the Miller program, all that. So she's prosecuting a criminal case. She's she is a criminal prosecutor. So there was a crime that was committed, and this is really the first acknowledgement of it being a crime, of the election interference being a crime and being investigated as such. Well, just to catch up before Jill chimes in about the Georgia stuff, Dr. Tachi, some people despise African joy. I know. And Laura says, as soon as I got off the plane, I immediately saw a Confederate oh flag. God. I just wanted to reboard and go back. Of course. And then she says, it was a beautiful trip. Thank you. What would you, man, coming off the airplane, going off a plane, it's the, one of the first things you see is a Confederate flag. Wow. There's just stupid people in America. And, and there's more and more than we know. There were 76 million of them. And that well, that's easy. That used to be not the much. I mean, there were only 80 million who voted for Biden. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's quite a fair amount of people who are on board with the racism here. What it do you is, think? What What are your thoughts? About, what are your thoughts about the Georgia Pro, Jill? You know, I just want to see them all fall down. I'm just waiting. I like, you know, I like that it's happening. I don't even need to hear all the stuff anymore about how they're going to do it. I just want it done. And then I want to see them all laid out on the street in body bags. <laughs> like I, I'm really over the fact with Giuliani, he's still able to milk the system and crying and moaning and he's being attacked. I don't want to hear about it. You know, I, I don't care anymore. And yeah, I just want them to arrest them. Yeah, yeah. Lindsey Graham is fidgeting in his seat just the fact alone that he knows this is serious. He's still remember, paying he, fealty. He You're right. Five hundred thousand yeah. dollars he gave to Trump, right? And remember, he's an he's an attorney. Lindsey Graham was the JAG attorney, so he knows exactly what's wrong, what's not, what's illegal, and what's not. And he knows that he committed a crime because if his first inclination was to say he's got to have his attorney fight it then he's trying to kick the ball down the road and this district attorney doesn't seem like she's for that remember she she's only been in what since january and she's already gotten a grand oh, jury yeah. together. Mm -hmm. and 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 the grand jury want see remember it it's not so much that she's trying to bring them in for the case the grand jury specifically asked to hear from them true well, this will obviously this is going to be quite the developing story, and it'll just flow right into the midterms. You know, I think it's going to be the midterms is getting more is getting more and more interesting with all the stuff that's going to be happening around the midterms. Well, well it's so weird Herschel because Walker, you. Well, I, mean, I, I was going to say Herschel Walker Stop should it. probably jump out now because he should. The way, that she's going, the way that she's going after people, his campaign people are already talking about how they don't trust him. So if he wants to keep running this election, he can, but just know that homegirl's going to come after him. Yeah, and she said there will be some of Trump's people that are all going to get subpoenas. She said that. Yeah, and she mentioned people who were, who were running. I'll tell you so where there's some really weirdness going on. It's in Arizona with that Carrie Lake woman who... Looks like her mama stepped out on her daddy somewhere in the middle. She don't look like any of her brothers and sisters. There's like nine of them, and she's the weird one. I don't know. <laughs> They're supposed to be Italian, but it looks like that's the always the default, right? Oh um, my God. Yeah, and, and keep your eyes on Arizona, as a matter of fact. Keep your eyes on Arizona Supreme they Court. Crazy. Because they, are about, they are about to rule on something that has to do with the elections there. So keep your eyes on that, and it it is it's it's something that could change everything. Right. So wow. true. Yeah, it's yeah. very QAnon. They're very weird over there, and they're doing some really dark things on the conservative side. But like I said, we we know that Arizona's strange. It's full of weird transplants. That's where that old Rhino Dino cinema is from. 
And she better enjoy her last couple of years there because I know they're going to get rid of her thing. But I just don't think that Arizona people seem to be intelligent enough with their voting. They fell for it once, they'll fall for it again. There's something really like, I maybe it's because only old people go there to retire and they're just, you know, having memory issues or something, but it's really bad. Like they really should, they're voting for some real dogs. All right. Laura saying those dominoes need to fall. They do. All right. All right. So let's continue on going on a nice pace here. Next conversation. Bojo. Bojo's gone for, in England. Boris Johnson oh. resigns, but will stay on until new leader is ch chosen. What do we he took the, he took the Nixon way out, really? I mean, but when you think about it, though, it's 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 it shows how blaringly dysfunctional the United States is. Is it's like Boris's people after a while started saying, <laughs> "Hey, hold up." He's 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 a little too far out there from where we want to go. Let's pull yeah. him back. And then the he had the dig he had the dignity enough to not want to further shame his party. So he, <clears> he was <throat> right, right. That's what they did with Nixon in seventy two. Exactly. That's true. And, so, I, and I think it's a very interesting example of American politicians should be looking at the mirror and saying, "Hmm," because. Was it about was it sixty representatives and then ministers resigned? Yes, they they yeah. left him in the dust. Yes, yes, that like, was I mean, so. Yeah. Now but this you also this have to understand <laughs> this. This is the other. Sorry to interrupt, but a lot of the ministers and those people they're already rich before they go in. They're not like we have poor people here. Or people that, you know, like Ted Cruz and them who finally get in and they never want to let go of it because they are, they come from like, they're not, they're not in peerage. Like some of these people are lords and ladies and stuff and in politics in England and they're in peerage, they're in the books. And I mean, they're, they're considered in a certain class from the get go. They, they go to those schools, not because their parents struggled and saved every dime to get them in. It was all about, oh, you're of this fiber, you're of this, you're of that. So for them, and then in America, in America, you have Lauren Boebert. Right. And then so anybody here from the Dust Bowl can f suddenly be in there. And that's fine. There's a good side to it. But Lauren Boebert and our first lady, I mean, it's amazing. But, you know, they're the equivalent of the happy hooker. They should just write books like we had. What was her name? And she was wrote for Cosmopolitan. I mean, this is this is the level where we are. But it's very different than their are across the pond. So they're a little more, the interesting thing is that people don't think that he'll be sitting there until September. They, they're antsy. The Brits want him out. There's a possibility we'll see a truck pull up any day and some folks jump out and say, bitch, we're going to help you pack and get you gone because they want him gone. And just his vibe alone is something that they're not sure that they're going to allow. You know how they are. Well, they also also they're also concerned about the future of their party, right? Because they see they've seen the example of what happens to the party. They and don't these, want him to do more damage while he gets right. to stay. And not only that, but there's a bunch of undignified people in yeah. the Republican Party in the United States. And you, the one thing about the Brits that you have to keep in mind is that dignity is like first on top of everything. Yeah. They do not want to come off as being like those raunchy uh, Americans, you know, totally. those dirty raunchy Americans. Yeah. So they 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 hold their party in higher esteem. Donald Trump, he remember he took the dregs of society, dug them up, and brought them to the top, and yes. that's the problem. And and then when he did that, they were more there were more of them than there were quote unquote respectable Republicans and they just took everything. So just to catch up here, Laura says Arizona is going to see some serious alarming things. It's going to be nasty just when we think they can't go lower, they dig deeper. Uh, yeah. She says, whoa, I missed the Boris news. Yeah. And the Dr. Tachi says, indeed, and and when you have all going you have all going for you, you're reluctant to let go of power. 
true. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but he 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 messed up on a lot of things. He's already got his money in a shell company somewhere and he's fine. Boris Johnson, all these people, they like I said, they come from money. And they're the from the kind of money that would never even think that Donald Trump had a long enough lineage with money in his family. He'd still be considered new money. So that's a whole different, that's like them that whole day, they were all laughing at Ivanka Trump in the middle of a meeting when they were all standing at a G7. You know, these people also have, it's just different. It's really different. I think that after what happened with Brexit, I think the damage was done. I think that there's also something else that Boris probably doesn't want to come out. And this was the happier because I believe that for sure there's a little yeah. bit of pressure. Let's not forget England, MI, they would be taken out. They still actually have an effective intelligence group that does stuff, unlike our CIA and stuff, which seems it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, we're not as badass as we once thought, I, as I thought we were. Clearly, but remember Donald, Donald Trump also diminished the capacity and the ability. He did. Of he totally did. He because remember, they, their their thing was intelligence and information, and he did not want any intelligence and information on himself. Now yeah, about MI six and MI five, you know, it's like yo, they still they still carry some weight, no matter how WikiLeaks and everything tried to really, you know, they still. They kept their their head in in the middle of all chaos. And you know the thing with Boris Johnson is that I can't remember what reporter did it, but they drew strong parallels with Donald Trump. But remember, Boris Johnson was a journalist at one point, and he got caught for plagiarism and lying in his articles, and so. And then he was still elected, right? It is the it is the same as Donald Trump. Remember, Donald Trump used to call all of the tips on himself to the New York Post and be like, "Oh, Donald Trump is going to be such and such." You know, go go there. The difference, though, I think, with what we're seeing happen in England versus here, is that the people are starting to hold their politicians a little bit more accountable. Not so much Boris himself, but the other ones that would put the pressure on him. And we have a problem where Ted Cruz is feeling no pressure. Lauren Bober is feeling no pressure. Oh, I don't know. I Marjorie think they're going to send they're him. Not feeling, they're not feeling pressure enough to act right. And I think vote they're right. sending Boris Johnson over here to run for president. Well, you he know can't. I mean, they he know was he born can't. here. He was born in New York, so he can. And I think that would be brilliant. To be honest, I think what he needs to do is come to America and see what happens, just for the fun of it. Because at this point, American citizens have their heads up something so far that I don't even know what it is anymore. Why not? Let's just really make it go down in flames. You know, your guy, Trudeau, was so nice with Biden at the G7, Dr. Vibe, you know, but he damn near was like holding his hand and walking him around. And, you know, this whole thing where some people mentioned where, you know, it's, 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 he can't be running in the next go round. I'm sorry. He can't. It's just not working where you could see even they maybe come to his aid and stand in front of cameras and stuff like that. Okay. Our country doesn't look very strong at the moment, and I still have not grown to like the new press girl. Sorry. And that has nothing to do with anything other than, I don't know if, if this man's club that they've got going on there, she's she needs to really take a media class or stop the um. Kareen, what is her name? I'm not feeling it, guys. I John keep saying. Pierre. Yeah, it's not, it's not working for me. Am I wrong? Do you guys find that you, you mm. think she's doing a great job? Let's be honest. I want to give her a little bit more time. Okay. I did, honestly, I have to say, coming into like the job that I have now, coming into it, I wasn't 
as well versed as I would have liked to have been. Her girlfriend is more well spoken than she is. My issues, so I know I stumbled over a few things in the in the beginning until I got my legs. Her wife is better at, you know, I think. But right now, I just don't think that. I don't get it, and I don't think the diversity hire was the one, and that's what it's coming across as. I don't think yeah. she's that qualified. So I gotta uh, wonder what her on this particular topic. I gotta just wonder what her reasons are because remember she worked out of the she came out of the biden i mean the obama administration to this one and she had worked she had worked strictly with obama at that time so i'm wondering how much is her comfort with joe biden so the fam some of the family's f feedback the press chick is lacking she needs to grow a pair I as agree. they say and yeah. Dr. Tachi says, I think she needs more time. So split on yeah. what, what the thing, but, but it'll be and great. Also, I, gotta, I, gotta say, I gotta say this, there's no doubt that somebody had the conversation with her behind closed doors because someone had that conversation with me when I was working in politics and was doing press. You can't come off as an angry black woman. You can't come off this way and forceful on this. People, they, they they have people who are behind and will do that. It's not that. She says um too many times for a trained professional. That's just that's, what they break you from in media training. But that's Sorry. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is that that no, no. Um, she's been in it too long. Thinking. No, she has been in it too long to be umming and uh I mm, no. That means that there's a lack of connection or you're about to lie to me is not good for a person. Joe, you would not want, look, Joe, you would not want to be with me in a, in a office meeting and I've asked something I'm not. I get it, sure. but I'm saying this is a very different thing than our offices and our corporate. This is our, this is a representation of our government. And when I think they let Jen Psaki go, I'm telling you, I walk away from her and I'm more concerned than I started out. And I don't need, I don't even watch them anymore. I'll be honest. I have not watched them in about three weeks now. Well, I'm they're not really because it me, as they should it either. Make me, no, but I feel like black people are defending her because she's black. And that's the truth. But she's not very good at this point. And okay. they need to be working with her on the weekends. Laura is saying she has to get her shark teeth out. Absolutely. If you, if you show weakness, they will eat you alive. And they have. That doocy is all over her. And then they make fun of her. I don't want to see people being made fun of because I like to make fun of somebody that I know is still kicking your ass, but not when I think they're right. Terrible feeling. All right. Let's move on to the next conversation piece. And this story keeps on growing. WNBA star Brittany Griner pleads guilty to drug charges in Russian court. Let's go to our WNBA expert. What do you have I mean, to say? It's All-Star Weekend. So WNBA All-Star Weekend, she's named a starter for All-Star Honorary. But this is no surprise. Who, she's in Russia, people, okay? If you, if they say you're guilty and you go to them and you plead not guilty, it's not like America, you get lost, you get tortured. You you know that that is how it is. Period. I've heard, I've read, and I've heard leanings that she the plea was intentional so that they could rush through the trial phase because that the United States can't make any kind of maneuvers. They can't make any suggestions for an exchange unless she's been convicted. So. We'll see what's coming out, what, what comes down the pike I, there. I, I, yeah, and I've been reading a little bit about who they're proposing to exchange for her. Right. And I'm just going, wow. Like, who is I, it? I, I don't know who it is. Some, it's an arms? The arms dealer. Yes, arms dealer. And it's send an them all back. Dealer. I mean, I don't understand. Give them all their people back. This is the craziest thing of all. It could be done in a day. The guy, Travis Reed's father. Um, yeah. Give, we have more than Brittany Griner as well. Let's get all of our people home. 
is the let's other get, guy, and that's what they're trying to do. Is, is let's let's is just to, get give them what they want. Who cares? And then blow the country to bits. <laughs> well, here's the, the thing: they can't, ask, they can't ask for anything until she is definitely convicted. In a, in a court because he said that's not true i saw the father today he said that's not how this works he actually they talked about how his i guess i encourage everybody to try to wa listen to this father because he had a process he's been working for years to get his son out who spent 10 years and he'd been working on this and he made all these connections and he said it could be done in an hour it could be done by tomorrow they have to give them what they want. And who cares what they, who cares about us housing and keeping their criminals anymore? Who cares? Get but his son was home. also convicted. That was the other thing that, that he mentioned though. His son had also been convicted. So that that's, I think the, the deal they're trying to. The deal uh, should be get our people back and then make them where they, everybody who comes from Russia has to have a visa to come here. And we can we know stop all of that. Well, you know, it's huh? not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. So the I don't deal know. That Wimbledon there. made a really good... Wimbledon did something very interesting that people were very pissed about, but I totally agree with them with Belarus and what they did with Russia. It has to be done. You can't keep letting our athletes and everybody else go. Look what happens to them. You're creating a false sense that we're getting along with everybody. If we're going to keep this exchange of letting their people come here and ours go there. It's not like that because the government plays games. First of all, I said to you on the phone, people yeah. in America don't smoke hash. Hash is from Amsterdam. Hash is something you buy in France, in Europe. It is not common for anybody in America to be like smoking hash. It's weed, it's hemp, it's CBD. The craziest part of all is they, they've got all the semantics to make it sound worse like it's some Midnight Express movie. Like, oh my God, she, oh, you know. Ooh, it's hash. Thought. No, it is CBD oil. And anybody here can make the mistake flying into Texas, you'll get arrested. If you have CBD oil in your lotion, you can get arrested. If you have CBD in your vape, you can get arrested. That's not uncommon, but it's not right. hash. That's a big difference. And to make that girl pledge or that she was guilty is so Russian. And, and so the reason why I feel like banning all of their athletes from everything, because they need to leave their own country and never go back and have nothing to do with it and get their own family members out. And I think the understanding Ridiculous. on the American side- And set, of deport the ones, you know, the, their equivalent of hash is the equivalent of me thinking every woman from Russia is a prostitute. So what should I do? What should I say? Is woman in Russia when they come to America mean anchor babies or prostitution? Or are we going to really go down that road because you're going to make it where somebody who shows up with a vape with CBD or hemp oil and you're going to act like they had some major drug? The hell with them. When, 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 wait a minute, the trafficking country of the world, Russia traffics more young people than, I mean, really? Then they can really go themselves. They need to let her go and stop fronting like they really, really are something. Oh, and they need an arms dealer back. Yeah, that's them. That's so Russia. You know, the the, the part on the on the American side that's so bizarre is our understanding of what hash what hash is versus CBD versus THC. The, Thank you. The stuff that's in the stuff that's in marijuana that makes you high is the THC part. So CBD cannabinoids, they use for a variety of things. They use it to treat epilepsy. They use it to, for arthritis. They use cancer. The, um, yeah, cancer. They use the oil. The oil has healing properties in of itself. They make lotions with it for people with arthritis. It, it's just, you know, it, it's our understanding of what, what it is that, that I think a lot of a lack of understanding is why I think a lot of people have taken, you know, to complain about. It's like, wait, you don't, you don't really understand what this is, and you also don't understand what's going on. There. I think the, they, the who is it, Whelan, his family, 
wants the Biden administration to make a deal for the make a deal with the two of them. Truth be told, I I kind of wonder what kind of lawyer she's getting over yeah. there because oh, remember, oh, oh, oh. She can you imagine? A Russian, <laughs> right, she's getting a Russian lawyer who would who, never go who, against Russia. That's right, right. exactly. So, right. but, but right. can I just bring up one thing about this whole semantics thing? Because as we see, one thing begets another. The reality is, if it was a real trial and if they were a real country that was really fair with information, but we know it's just a lying state. Everybody has a job, but they're all liars. And everybody who's an oligarch is not their money. It belongs to Putin. They all just front and pretend their whole freaking lives. But the biggest question for me is like, we're talking about even in our own country where we're telling women that they're pregnant and they're carrying babies and that's human life. And that woman in Texas got stopped in the commuting lane and she, you know, said, well, you basically, I'm carrying a human life. We're looking at things where one thing begets another. So in that situation, it turns into, well, then I'm going to file that I have a baby. I'm going to write this off on my taxes. So I'm a little tired of conservatives and weirdos and strange grifter countries that take the terminology and the media here, mainstream media, continuing to push this false narrative that it was hashish. It, in, it wasn't. There's no way. We have dogs at the airports. We have people in our customs. What We're going to allow Russia to play us like we're so... We had no idea when, you know, she left, really. They have dogs that walk around if anybody's traveled abroad, even when we leave here. You don't think it gets, you can smell that? Give me a break. And they don't check vapes? That's nonsense. This is nonsense. All this is, is so that Russia can look like Russia's so efficient, but can't even tell the difference between THC, hemp, CBD oil, and hash. Meanwhile, the drug capital, trafficking capital of the world, they've made more money off of people's bodies alive and dead than any other country in the whole world and will continue to milk that. Babies and all, they don't care. Ruthless barbarians. I mean, and, and remember she left out of, was it LaGuardia? Thank you. I know and LaGuardia. Terminal, the new terminal in LaGuardia too. Yeah, and and when you have to go through customs in LaGuardia yeah. to to leave the country, they check. I know. Everything. You mean so, they take, we take off our shoes, but they don't see when our vapes go through. So who who's clowning who? Russia wants to seriously clown America that our guys couldn't spot the difference. I'm sorry, these people have war machines that are broken down in Ukraine. Their airports look like their technology because why? Because Vladimir Putin takes all their money. You know, please, they're just playing us. But more importantly, they've got this poor girl and they're doing it on purpose and they're racist to boot. Racist. I've never and, met a Russian who wasn't low key don't even racist. Talk about LGBTQ. Didn't talk about black people behind their backs. I've never. I've worked for people, they think I'm white, and I've worked for a bunch of Russians once, and I could tell you the shit they said. It was crazy. And not only about black people, about Jewish people, and be dating them. Dating them, sleeping with people, and literally anti-Semitic. Crazy shit I've ever seen. Oh, but they were models. I'm a model. Yeah, okay. So tell me something, I'm sorry. That's just, you know, freaking Coney Island. But yeah, they got some low key tendencies because, you know, what and what black people or people of color in Russia have you seen in any power positions? Please do tell me, please find a picture and send me an, a, a picture of a black official or a person of color in Russia who has a real job. Wow. OK, let's let's catch well, up. Most of the yeah. Jobs are for the government. So, yeah. Laura's saying she is doing what they demand her to do, obviously. Yep. And it's it's and she also says it's all a game. We know what's happening to her and it's horrific. Also, she says she has she's a power example for True. them, just like the others. She's gonna get 
attention in this moment. That's and the other thing too, before you go on, that's the other thing too um, that I think people need to understand is that she's not just a WNBA star over here, over there. She's won Russia eight championships. And she's LGBTQ. Don't forget LGBTQ, that too. Yes. They can't stand but she's that. Very, but she's famous in Russia mm -hmm. in a way because of the eight championships that she's helped the Russian league win. And let's hope she never has to do that again. No. Right. Oh, she. This, well, this will be definitely an ongoing story. Another one because I. It's not the last you've heard about this one. Let's talk about a really interesting, another interesting story, assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Like, did, did anyone see this? See the video I of it? The video. Yeah, and, and you, you have to wonder. It makes me wonder how this happened. But then when I heard, when I heard someone who has expertise in government in japan it made sense like in the united states we're used to our former presidents having pretty for at least at least the first two some odd years after they left the office apparently in japan they don't have that kind of security after they've left office and so this what this made it easy for him while he was out campaigning for people to get close enough to him to assassinate him. And that's something that they're looking at changing. It looked like he was standing on the side of a road of a highway. What the hell was going on? He didn't have any coverage. One dude, I think. The other ones were distracted. And this guy was a... You know, it's it's very funny in all the, in the world abroad. We're so used to here people having armed everybody in security, but you know, let's not forget other countries. People don't even exploit their wives and husbands. You know, Merkel had a husband who went to a job every day. America is the only country that has it where these people are like celebrities, so they're they're still almost reachable because they serve a public of people and not treated completely like oh my god they're an untouchable but this dude went and i think he made his gun and they're just taking cues from america which is why the europeans and people abroad are going to have to really weigh that about what value it is for them even with their imports of films and what they start allowing into their country because people are taking cues that 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 Violence is the answer. I, some people said he was a fascist, and I don't really know, but I, I don't think this was good for your country to see assassinations and that when when that's a failure of a of a Not society. A good look. It's a Not failure a good look. of your society when when your when that's happening with your politicians, whoever they may may be. Def definitely not a good look. Mm. All right, let's finish off with. One of Jill's boys. Uh, you guys can start. Aisha's got this. When you and Aisha, you know, I've said everything I need to say about, you know, so we knew this is gonna Daddy happen. Warbucks. Basically, <laughs> basically what happened was Elon Musk got clowned about something on Twitter. He got dragged for it. He didn't like how it felt. And so he decides, well, you know, I'll show all those people. I'll buy Twitter. Then I can kick them off and never have people talk bad about me again. It's so Trumpian. It's so egotistical. Richie it's Rich, so right? Right. And, and yeah. it, that was the only reason that he wanted to do it until he realized he actually entered into a deal that he couldn't get out of financially and that, you know, he, he'd be locked into it. So now he says he's walking away from it. But make no mistake he's walking away from a deal that he's going to end up paying a lot of money on a in little the back. poorer because jack obviously they thought he was serious because jack went on and decided he was like i'm retiring i'm gonna just join the board and you know because he was getting into that cushy position right there yeah. where he could you know just reap the benefits and now he's elon's pulling out and all these guys are expecting their money <laughs> he played you know? himself he played himself that's all you gotta say elon musk played himself finally this is hilarious to me 
I just thought, wow, this is hilarious. He totally played himself like for the jerk that he is because his ego just got ahead of him. And we see he messed around, couldn't handle it, and went and had a bunch of twins with some other chick. This dude is out here trying to create a seed of something we don't even know. And what a mess. What a disaster, as Donald Trump would say. What a disaster. The guy's a disaster. <laughs> He's a wreck. His cars, somebody tweeted it in the other day that your cars are cheap inside. I was just like over, like, wow, it's not Elon's day. Yeah, they, I mean, but I mean, it was such a petty, his whole move was just like him being petty. He sold wolf tickets, he and then he sold some checks he couldn't cash, honey. Remember, he was like talking about I'm gonna have freedom of speech and bloop de bloop de bloop. Really, well, Elon? Bring, no, this look, is another Elon, well, Elon, 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 yeah. Well, he's really backed himself in the corner now because either he's got a back out and he's gonna owe a lot of money to Twitter, or Twitter's gonna take him to court to force him to take that deal. Or mm -hmm. yes, or or he'll have to he he's gonna probably have to try to renegotiate a deal at a lower price because he but the price he asked or he bid is so overinflated. The sad yeah. thing is, yeah. and the thing is, even if he becomes head of Twitter, from what I've been reading, Twitter employees cannot stand him. Management cannot stand him. So it's not oh, he's yeah. not in a good situation right now. But I have a feeling he'll find a way of wiggling out. No, I think what he's going to end up doing is quietly taking a loan, reaching a settlement with Twitter to pay them back something, but he's not going to take over the management of it, no. He came out and now to distract, because that's what all these people do, he's going to increase health care benefits in his company now since he's had 10 or 12 or 15 kids. These are just the kids that everybody knows of. I mean, this dude is like... You know, he's got one poor child that emancipated themselves from him basically the other day, right? And changed his name. I mean, that's not, and then a new, two new ones. It's, what a devastating, you know, what? how gross is that? I mean, it's wow. it's really sad to see that there's a child in pain that he already had who's living. And, I, you know, was that hurt that that's what they did? It's awful. So let's let's just catch up on some comments here. Laura said, I just going back to the Brittany Garner story says, I just rubbed CBD in my knees. Pata is saying, what are the facts? Did she bring a legal substance into a foreign country or not? We don't know. <laughs> of course she didn't. Any idiot would know it's impossible to do considering when you leave out of LaGuardia, the new terminal. We have dogs that walk around all day. They would have caught it. So Russia's playing games like they always do. So Stop Laura's saying, taking the bait is. Laura's, Laura's saying with Japan, J Japan gun violence is no, no almost non-existent. So mm -hmm. this was alarming. I agree that the other countries are taking awful cues from the U.S. And then she has Elon got butt hurt and tried to be the kid who takes the ball home who but doesn't get home. his way. Yeah. Boo hoo! <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, I mean, no. honestly. And the other part of it, too, is that he realized that there were some community standards that he could not change by law if it's a public company, which Twitter is now. He there's there's no way that he's going to there's no way he'd be able to run it the way that he opened his mouth and verbal vomited how he would run it. He's always opening his mouth and as a Cancerian himself. You know, I, and I'm a cancer and I know how that can be. You got to watch it, but he's also a cancerian man and they're the absolute worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Jill, just don't make no blanket statements. All right. I know some of them are hey. the ones from South Africa <laughs> by the name of Elon Musk. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's well, pompous and he's arrogant. You know, let's be honest. This is kind of like, it's terrible that we, we like to see a man get kicked when he's down, but these are the days that we're in. And he uh, actually deserves he, it. And he, he played a lot of games and created a lot of problems for people yet again. And, you know, he, he likes to play both ends against the middle and straddle the fence. And 
you know, it didn't work out too well for people during the French Revolution who did that because we're reaching a time where people want people to be straight up, straight, and they're not really going to take it for much longer. I just believe that firmly. Well, that's another episode of State of Things with Aisha and Jill. Loris in full laugh mode, emoji. With, a, with well, we're gonna have you back, Laura. We gotta get get, get your get your get your relaxation time because you know that Aisha and Jill are on fire it's as always. Per- and it's terrible. I do have some male friends who are Cancerians. I need to, but Elon apology. Musk is just yeah, not. Get a little bit of apology going on. I'm right. sorry. That wasn't oh, fair. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that wasn't fair. All right, no problem. Well, another epic, epic conversation is done. As always, I'd like to say thank you for the to the ladies for making time. And Jill Jones, how do people get in touch with you? Right there, Jill D. Jones at Twitter or Jill Jones Music Instagram. Wonderful. And Aisha K. Right there at Aisha. Right there. <laughs> right, there. I like that. right there. All right, good stuff. And for myself, if you want to get in touch with me, you do it. Website, the drvibeshow.com. Email dr. Period at the drvibeshow.com. YouTube and Facebook, The Dr. Vibe Show. Twitter at drvibeshow. And the same thing on Instagram. Well, on Instagram, the at the drvibeshow. As always, want to say thank you to everybody who watched us live or cut us on the replay, either video-wise or audio-wise. You can catch State of Things with Aisha and Jill live every Saturday, most live most Saturdays. So if we're not available live, we definitely have a replay up, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on the Dr. Vibe Show YouTube and Facebook page. Also, you can watch replays of State of Things with Asian Jill, the Dr. Vibe Show, YouTube and Facebook, and also on the website, the drvibeshow.com. As always, I like to say this, live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourselves grace. Let me just put myself on mute. I got a cough. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, I'm going to go take myself and heal myself up. But as always, I like to say, God bless, peace, well, keep the faith, walk good. Remember to give yourselves grace. And also, don't just manage your time, manage your energy. And we will catch you. Make sure And also subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on Facebook and YouTube so you get updated on the next time we're on and any shorts that we have put up. I'm going to be... In the next week or so, I'm going to be putting clips from different uh, past shows. So if you missed anything, you'll get little clips coming up. So God bless. Peace, y'all. Keep the faith and walk good.